Dear people of Ireland, in response to the latest criminal activity from the acting government of Ireland regarding conversion of private banking debt to sovereign debt without asking the Irish people. Who are the Irish? Who are we? Where do we come from and how did we get into the position we are in today where the majority of the population are now struggling to keep food on the table and their children warm in their beds at night? Where corporate profit supersedes community welfare? Where the German parliament scrutinises the Irish budget before our own government does? Are we Gales? Who were the Gales? Are the great majority of us on this island descendants of King Mail of Spain? The king who sent his sons to faraway lands to the shores of Hibernia, the land of milk and honey, the prophesied land of their future to avenge the death of their uncle Ike. Are we a princely nation, sprung from the loins of Heber, Heramon, Ur and Ike, all sons of Mill, survivors of the landings and initial battles, successful conquerors of the peoples of the island of that time, battles fought, alliances made? Are we the Gales, who are later to spread to every corner of the Emerald Isle, connecting with the land and its creatures as they went? Stories still abound of the tribes of the Ornacht, who controlled the province of Munster for centuries, later becoming the builders of the Rock of Cashel, descendants of Owen Moore, King of Munster. Also the Dalcassians, descendants of Cass, son of Owen Moore, progenitor tribe of Brian Boru, were famous for their battles lost and won. Tribes steeped in tradition and honour where the Breton rules of engagement in war were strictly adhered to. No need to wipe out an entire tribe, which were cousins after all. Let the best warriors stand forth and hold the honour of the tribe on their shoulders. A time when wealth was measured by the strength and cohesion of the community. Where each community supported all of its component parts, rather than the enslavement of the tribe through a centralised money system where profit for faceless shareholders is the name of the game. Why did our ancestors battle tooth and nail in an attempt to maintain the last of the Gaelic order in this country at the Battle of Kinsale? Why did Red Hugh O'Neill travel through every bog and forest, through barren landscapes and treacherous mountain passes to avoid Elizabethan forces? He tried desperately to reach the commanders of the Munster forces, including Donald Cam O'Sullivan, the last Gaelic chieftain famous for his later epic march to Leitrim in the depths of a brutal winter fleeing the aftermath of the destruction of his ancestral home in Beira, County Cork. He started this march with a thousand soldiers, men and children, women included, all marching for their lives, seen as outlaws and pursued by their own people. Due to a price on Donald's head, they arrived with less than 50. A tragic and heroic tale which should never be forgotten. These men fought to the bitter end of Kinsale, where some poor judgments on that fatal night marked the end of 3,000 years of Gaelic sovereignty. Why did these men go to such lengths to preserve what they knew, what they loved? What was so attractive to their earlier invaders, the Normans, from where the saying stems they became more Irish than the Irish themselves, what was it? These people were people who were sovereign and knew it, where you trained to be a warrior from the age of seven, where the next cycle of your life kick-started, taken from the closeness of the mother's breast, and a blunt wooden sword or even a hurley was thrust into your hand to train you in matters of life and death. A warrior had learned from an early age that fear was its greatest enemy, but without fear all things were possible and great alliances held. We were a people who lived the laws, not feared them, where the Brehan sat with his king and tribe in a circle, toiling to balance the scales of justice rather than sitting high above the people, dishing out summary judgments from courts with no license. Courts that were set up in a commercial capacity, created only for profit and not for people. Why didn't we recognise the need to end this foreign and alien system of justice after so many men and women gave their lives trying to free us from the commercial empire, from the city of London? Have we forgotten the steel determination of the heroes of our most recent past, the Fenians, the United Irishmen, the Irish Volunteers, Wolf Tone, Connolly, Parnell, Pierce, Collins, Kent? not forgetting the unbreakable women of the Gale, the pirate Queen Granuel, who sailed to Greenwich, to meet her ultra ego in England, Queen Elizabeth, to argue her case for her stolen estate, which she surprisingly won back. Anne Devlin, the hero of the 1798 rebellion, a woman of remarkable courage and nationalism, who for her sins would not let the authorities know where the leaders of the rebellion were holding out. Anne was taken into custody and tortured for years along with her family members to try and sway her, never uttering a syllable no matter how brutal the threat. All brave souls in their time, misunderstood by the majority, revered by the minority. 
that can sense these men and women of immense passion and stubborn determination violently shifting in their graves with the talk of their grandchildren's grandchildren and their brethren accepting with a bemused look of indifference on their faces the unlawful and criminal foisting of private gambling debts onto the sovereign people of Ireland of ERA. If only the apathetic people knew the truth of their history the truth behind the reality of the Great Irish Famine being really the Great Irish Holocaust and not a great hunger created by nature's intent. Where soldiers stood in fields with rifles pointing to the ground, ready to lift and kill on sight, any starving might who might steal some grains of corn. Where fishing communities with boats overloaded with the bounty of the sea ended up in poor houses, watching through the windows as their catch was exported elsewhere for sale all hidden under the political guise of international free trade agreements. All lies! If only the bemused modern guilds were aware of the dumping of private corporate debt into the public purse is an unlawful act under international law. If only they were aware it is classed as an odious debt. If the Irish people understood the difference between what is lawful and what is legal, we would have a revolution before morning. If this were the case, the fear behind the threat of payment of property, water and septic tank taxes would rapidly dissipate. For fear and love is the ultimate dichotomy. You either live from a place of love or you live from a place of fear. Fear contracts the mind and heart. Love expands. Truth builds love. Lies grow fear. Search for truth in those around you and connect. Top-down control of people always ends badly. Not only do we now have a centralised authority in Dublin, we also have it in Brussels, Berlin, the IMF HQ, the ECB and on it goes. How could any of these people in lofty European positions of financial power possibly know what is good for us? Have they lived on our land? Have they endured a wind and rain swept Irish winter? Have they experienced the buzz you get when you walk into a packed Irish pub filled with the excited chatter masterfully created by ancient tones of aeons gone by? Singing to the people, singing to the land. Have they been witness to the latest mass exodus from our ports, both air and sea? The tiger cups confused and bedazzled with the head-spinning reality of what just happened. Why do I have to go away? I want to stay. From two cars in the drive to searching for discounted meat in Tesco within a few years. What just happened? Mothers choosing to put petrol in the car or oil in the tank to switch on the heating for a few hours a day. What just happened? Fathers so ashamed of losing their jobs and failing their families, sitting in a car park waiting for the day to end. It's more preferable to going home and revealing the truth while the arrears build up around them. What just happened? Some men never leave the car park, too ashamed to make the journey home. What just happened? Centralised power corrupts, absolute power corrupts, absolutely. If only the great people of this nation were to stand in a giant circle and connect hands with the understanding this nightmare we find ourselves in can be reversed by an educated and empowered populace. The call is here, the call is now. Our call from all those who came before is for a universal movement of reform, a movement that will inspire a grassroots rising of consciousness where people from all communities of our rolling land will meet and converse the issues of the day. A facilitated open space can be created for the energy and enthusiasm which needs direction. For without direction of energy, misunderstandings develop, polarisation occurs and sparks fly. Nothing is resolved, positions are maintained and nothing ever changes. From using open space, work groups could be created, like minds will find each other, conscious thought will be spoken, releasing pent-up frustrations and fears, blocks of creative energy spewing forth, gravitating towards convergence through rigorous but well-intentioned conversation. Once there is unity of mind, the gaze can once again dip into the well of exceptional wisdom left behind by thousands of years of Irish culture and experience. With unity of mind, all things are possible. An explosion of creative thought can occur using facilitation as a method of directing people's energy and enthusiasm instead of dampening local vibrant thought by party control using a whip, a big stick or whatever psychological weapon of choosing will not only create a revolution in Irish society but a renaissance as we will want to sing about it, write about it, 
the dance to the beat of a new drum, a rhythm that rings true to the heart, the heart of the community. It will bring us back in line with what we have forgotten as a people, that money was only ever supposed to be a token of exchange to allow us to share our work and talents with peoples of our own tribe, other tribes and other nations. It was never meant to be hoarded by the few to the detriment of the many. We are the 99% was the rallying cry from the occupied tented villages in city parks and central streets all over the world, for they know the truth of money is debt and the realisation of the greatest land and resource grab in modern history due to the self-perpetuating boom and bus cycles of the faceless, careless few, the 1% the world elite. The few who, for want of limitless power and ego-driven greed, have lost all connection with the earth, Mother Earth, Sophia, and all the peoples of every colour and creed who are intimately connected with her by every beat of their heart and the placing of their feet upon her vast expanses of soil and sand, not forgetting the subtle but powerful effects of the human frequency. There has never been a greater time in Irish history for the majority to change the course and therefore the direction of the Irish ship. The most famous of all ships, the Titanic, was built in an Irish shipyard. It was said to have hit an iceberg deep in the wintry Atlantic and sunk to an unfathomable depth. With the advent of the internet and the dizzying advances in modern technology, it is possible for the first time in human history to communicate a good idea with the majority of the inhabitants of this globe with the touch of a button, setting a new safer course. If you can bank online, you can vote online is a quote from Trends researcher Joris Lente, a recent visitor to Dublin to warn of a possible global financial collapse and how to avoid this apocalypse from becoming reality. Consultative democracy from a grassroots level has been a reality for the Swiss for hundreds of years, so much so they never felt the need to enter the Eurozone. Another European country frozen in the northwest of the Atlantic, Iceland, is also building a new constitution and form of governance and most recently a new public banking system. After imprisoning some of the more criminally adventurous banksters who are living a game of monopoly on speed, our ancestors did not have this luxury. A small band of men managed to forever change the course of Irish history by desperately taking up arms and fighting a battle they knew they had no hope of winning by taking the GPO. We know what their sacrifice managed to achieve. Their quick and unjust execution created an outcry across the country, across the world, and forever changed the political and social landscape of Ireland. They were only a few thousand. Imagine the possibility of hundreds of thousands of awake and empowered Irish working together to end the top-down control of money, government, law and resources, education and health, food and spirituality. The list is endless. Do you want to be one of those who in 50 years' time is sitting around an open fire with your children, grandchildren and their children all around you and telling grand tales of the times gone by? When governments controlled people, laws were written to protect the wealthy. Food was grown to make you sick. Education was designed to keep you ignorant. Religion was preached to keep you disconnected from yourself. Television was made to keep you in a trance. Hospitals were built to only treat the symptoms and not the cause. Natural resources were stolen for the profit of shareholders and money was designed to enslave all the men, women and children of this beautiful and dynamic planet. Wouldn't it be a wonderful thing for the youth of this future generation to live in a world of plenty, with a truly humane, functioning society, to look at each other in disbelief, shaking their heads and whispering to each other. Grandad's joys are very entertaining to listen to, but it's utterly mad. People would never treat themselves like that. Sure, who would put up with that sort of carry-on? There would be riots in the streets, it's pure insanity. We are at a crossroads. Choose love or fear. I choose love and the road less travelled. With love, an Irish Gale.